In our lives, most of us will be affected by cancer in some way. But living in these remote villages here in the mountains of Ecuador is a community of dwarves who appear to be immune, not only to cancer, but to diabetes as well. A pair of scientist brothers are on a mission to prove that these people could help in our understanding of some of the biggest medical problems of our time. Dr. Marco Guevara is taking us to meet a group of people he's been researching. They suffer from an extremely rare genetic disorder called Laron syndrome. There are only about 300 people with Laron dwarfism in the world, and a third of them live here in the southern Loja province. They have an average height of just over four feet, but unlike other forms of dwarfism, their bodies are in proportion. But what really interests Dr. Guevara is that none of his dwarf patients have ever died from cancer, and despite a tendency to obesity, none of them have developed diabetes. These communities are sparse and remote, so marriage within families has been happening for generations. Laurent syndrome is a result of this inbreeding. Sisters Alexandra and Edith Rocha's family are peanut farmers. Their parents, like many others in the village of San Vicente del Rio, are cousins. Do your parents have Laurent syndrome? Mis padres son normales. My parents are normal, my grandparents were normal. I have seven siblings, four of them are normal height and three of us are little. What interests the doctors is a unique aspect to this type of dwarfism, which they think results in there being no recorded cases of cancer or diabetes among sufferers. The fundamental difference with patients who have Laron syndrome is that these patients have normal growth hormones, but they don't have the receptors which allows them to grow. The problem of having normal growth hormones but no actual growth is exciting the scientific community. In Quito, Dr. Jaime Guevara is interested in the absence of a hormone called insulin-like growth factor 1, or IGF-1. He thinks this holds the key as to why cancer and diabetes fails to develop in Laron dwarves, but does develop in the rest of us. So do these findings mean that the medical world is a step closer to finding a cure for cancer and diabetes? Yeah, in a sense, in a sense, yes. These findings have caught the attention of a professor in South California, Dr. Walter Longo. When he reproduced the Laurent mutation in mice, he found that not only do they live 10 times longer, but they also don't get cancer. For the cancer, um, in our uh, very long-lived mice, uh, we and others have shown that not only there is a longevity extension, but there is a major reduction either in the DNA damage or in the uh, cancer uh, rate incidence. I think it's reasonable to uh, at least uh, believe that there may be uh, mutations that can uh, uh, push the balance uh, towards an anti-cancer an anti mode. Whilst these people with Laurent may bring the medical world closer to cracking the cancer cure, in a country as poor as Ecuador, there's a pressing problem that dogs these trials. There is actually a treatment for Laurent syndrome, but most sufferers here can't afford the medicine needed to help them grow. For most patients, it's too late, as the expensive growth treatment must be administered before puberty. But the doctors have been lobbying for children like 10-year-old Yannick to receive free drug treatment. In male children with this treatment, they could grow up to 1 meter 60 in height. I want to be big like my daddy. As these people come under greater scrutiny, they now want to use their newfound voices to get the help they need. Scientists are interested in using us to investigate what's needed to help them. We all want to give our help, but we also need help. So if they help us, we'll help them and we'll both work together, so we'll all be winners. Para que todo sea mutuo y los dos ganemos de parte y parte. Romita Navai, more for news, Quito.